Amen. Well, this is a very special day. Amen. Amen. But there's some things we've got to get out of the way before it gets as good as it can get. Amen. You're right, brother. You're in the hot seat. Amen. And Sister Courtney, God bless your heart, honey. You are too. <laughs> you didn't ask for this. Uh, this is not your this is not your your call necessarily, but in subjection to your husband and what God's called him to do. We appreciate you uh, you, you coming and, and being by his side. We're going to have to be by his side a lot in days to come. Preacher, you'll feel like there's nobody in this world loving you besides Jesus and your wife. Sometimes you'll be questioned. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, uh, I, I, Brother Kenny, I appreciate you. Amen. And uh, what we're getting ready to do, I'm going to tell you and everybody else, else is what we're getting ready to do is not, uh, we're, first of all, it's, it's in a spirit of, uh, it's just proof that. That you stand right and you believe, of course, this ordained council in this church approves of the ministry that you're going into. But uh, I, I'm going to tell you this I know how you're going to answer all of these questions. Right. Uh, all of us pretty well know how you're going to answer these questions, or you would have never gotten where you are right now. So, uh, so you're among folks that love you. Courtney going to be a great blessing to find Brother Church. Uh, hadn't been up there in a while, Brother uh, Roy and Sister Faith Hall. We appreciate y'all going to good meetings with you. Well, to be in up there. <clears throat> now, uh, hadn't known Brother Kenny, but just a few years. And, uh, and I, I appreciate what you stand for. There's no, no backup in you, and I like that. Or Sister Courtney, I've known her since she was just a little young. You know, I will say this, and I'm going to get on with it. As long as I've known Sister Courtney, there's one scripture that comes to mind. Over there in John chapter number one, said, uh, I believe it was Philip, said, can there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? And I always think about that when I think of can there any good thing come out of Brother Jack McKee? <laughs> he can't say a word back to me. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you didn't know me and Brother Jack, you'd think we was about to go out in the yard and fight. <laughs> And uh, all right, well let's just uh, let's just move along. I know you're ready to get this over with. And uh, brother Kenny, I'd like for you to tell us about your salvation experience. Yes, sir. You don't have to come up here. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want to. Whatever it took. I just need to start by saying that uh, I've known for probably just had a feeling that this was going to be a question that was going to be asked for I don't know possibly a week or so and <clears throat> it just seems like that the devil's been he's been fighting hard telling me that my salvation story is not good enough but I, I guess from the time that I was little I, I've known one I knew one preacher and probably one preacher alone and, and he was as good to me as as anybody I've ever met, and still to this day, I still love him, still think of him as a as a great mentor, a great father figure, a great a great pastor, a great preacher, everything like that. He came to my house on, on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, he was there every day. And whether we came or not, he always came. He was faithful. Whether we came or not, he was faithful. And I grew up going to church and Minneapolis Baptist Church over in Avery County. I guess from the time I was, 
don't know, they say out there in Piper, so I don't know, I don't believe that, but it all comes down to one specific night, and I can't remember all the specific details, but I can remember at almost eight years old, I was sitting on the pew, kind of in the middle of the, in the middle of the uh, sanctuary there, at the Bellevue Baptist Church, and it was, it was almost Christmas time, and they preached a message, and gave an invitation, and I don't, don't recall anybody else standing up, and don't recall anybody else doing anything else in the church, it was, it was completely quiet, it was just dead silent, and all of a sudden I just couldn't help myself to feel it up, and call for it. if you're lost, you can be saved, I remember walking to the front, and we were going once there. I remember Brother Brian Griffin just saying, do the best you can. And I knelt down, he knelt down. And I just remember the words, do the best you can. And I just I just remember just remember saying, Jesus, I know I'm lost, and I know I'm going to hell. There's nothing I can do to get me anywhere else. I can't go any farther. And I know that I'll never make it. I will never go anywhere in this life unless I have to do this. Amen. 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 Just please say Amen. Amen. That's all I remember. I remember getting up. And I was as free as ever been. Amen. I know I'll never be as free as I have been on that day for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. I remember going back to the pew and walking with a different stature, I guess. I remember getting on the church bank and going home that night as soon as I got to the house. I went to the family. Amen. Amen. That's when I'm not going to hell. Amen. Amen. I couldn't Amen. Amen. I was so excited I couldn't see. Amen. And I've been led astray since then. But I just, I thank God for my testimony. And I don't care what anybody says. It's good enough for Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
about uh, two years ago, I'd only, I've only been going to church here for about four years after I got out of the military. And like I said, I had been led astray probably for quite some time. Sometimes it just takes getting back under the, the preaching of sound doctrine to realize all that you all that you really are and all that you really uh, need Jesus for. But uh, I can remember one one Sunday I was sitting in the pew there. You don't really hear it preached about anymore. And when he was sitting beside of me and, and uh, Brother Daniel preached a message on the Lord still calling me. And, and again, I can recall that it sounded like there was complete silence there. And, and I could hear the things that he was saying, but then at the same time I could hear, you know, God just telling me that this is where I needed to be and this is where this message is just for you. It doesn't matter if there's anybody else here listening. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks from this point on in your life. He said, you're going to stand and you're going to preach my word. And it, it made more sense that day than any other day. But that was... That was probably about two years ago, and uh, I struggled with it, and struggled with it, and prayed about it, and ran from it, and I can't remember what it was, but I remember somebody told me that I should run from it as long as I could. I said, well, that doesn't really make sense to me, but thank you for your input. And I came here one Wednesday night to, to do a, a Wednesday Bible study lesson, and it was just me and Preacher Daniel here in the sanctuary, and, and when I got done, we sat down and we talked, and I, I told him a story about how I had been led astray and thought that it was my own decision that I needed to become a preacher, so uh, I, back in 2011, 2012, I was in a church that didn't make any sense and didn't, it, it was pure confusion. And I thought you, as a person, just made just made a decision that this is what I'm going to do. So I had made the decision that I was going to preach then, and it was a big failure because it was my own will and not the will of God. So I struggled really bad after that message that Preacher Daniel preached, saying that there's no way that, that you want me because I've already tried this one time against your will and, and failed. I said, there's no way... And, and there's no how that I can do it. I'm not. I'm not good enough. I'm not. I'm not smart enough. I don't know the Bible enough. I don't know anything about it. And Preacher Daniel, when I talked here that night after that Wednesday night Bible study, and I talked to him and asked him questions. But the most important thing that he told me that night was, "There's nothing that I can say, and there's nothing that anybody else can say to make this decision." We can't make it for you. He said, you and God have to decide that together. Amen. And I can remember the Wednesday night that he was talking about. I had, I had fought with salvation. I had, I had asked God every question in the book to try to avoid the one question, the one thing that he was trying to tell me to do. I had asked him every question that I could think imaginable that might be wrong, that might that I might need to do differently, I'd ask him every question that I could think of. And I remember sitting over here one Wednesday night and I, I had come to the altar to pray and I got up and went back. And then I needed to go back one more time because things just weren't settled. When I came, I just finally said, I finally said, God, if it's not my salvation, if it's not my family, if it's not me, then just tell me what it is, and I'll, I promise I'll do it. And I just remember clear as day, at that point in time, I, it was just a piece that I had that he said, just go preach, and I'll take care of the rest. <laughs> and so I stood up and went back to my seat, and, you know, Lord bless God that there was one saved, and it, it's not about stealing somebody's limelight, or it's not about stealing somebody's moment of salvation. I would never try to do that, but... Uh, more than one good thing can happen at one time. Don't ever let anybody tell you that just because somebody else got saved that, 
uh, and they've already gone back and testified, don't mean that you can't go get saved or you can't go answer the call that God's given you. No one can ever, there can never be too many good moments at one time. Amen. But that's, that's, how I, Amen. that's how I was called Amen. to church. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Kenny, do you believe the word of God to be in air and in battle? Brother Kenny, do you believe the King James Bible is the preserved word of God for his English speaking? Do you believe that the local New Testament church is the body that has been ordained to carry out the work of God? Is the head of the church Jesus Christ himself? Do you believe there are two ordinances of the church? And what are they? Do you believe that the New Testament local church should be active in missions? Do you believe tithing is God's plan for financing the New Testament church? Do you practice it? Yes, sir. Do you believe in giving to missions? Man of God should preach on the tithe and the missions given. But again, what is the gospel? The gospel is simply the grace of death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brother Kenny, do sinners have to hear the gospel preached to be saved? Yes. And those sinners, when they hear the gospel and they are willing to submit to the working of the Holy Ghost, are they saved by the grace of God through faith or through repentance of their sin and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ or by good works? Through faith, by grace, through faith. Do you believe Jesus Christ was born of a virgin? you believe that being born of a virgin that was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost that the blood that was in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ was divine blood making him deep? Yes, do. do you believe that this made him not only the Son of God but that he was God in the flesh? Yes, I do. do you believe that he had to come as God in the flesh because God required death for the pain of sin, or for the sin dead, and God couldn't die. Yes. But that he had to be God in the flesh because of the fact that it had to be a perfect sacrifice and it was not a perfect man. Yes. Brother Kenny, is the blood of Jesus an absolute necessity for the salvation of Brother Kenny, once a sinner is born again, do you believe in eternal security for that believer? So you don't believe he needs to be born again and again and again? Amen. 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 That'll work. That'll work. Amen. Brother, do you refute and wholeheartedly refuse the teachings of the charismatic movements of our day? Use the uh, we call it the universal church being uh, the body that does the work of God. Brother, do you believe the qualifications of a man of God in First Timothy three are liberal and necessary? Brother, do you believe a divorced man? Or a divorced and remarried man qualifies as a preacher of the gospel. Brother Kenny, if God forbid something happened to your marriage relationship apart from death, 
Would you willingly step down and forfeit your credentials as a Baptist preacher? Yes. Brother, are you honest and just in your business dealings? You pay your debts, you pay them on time. Do you believe that God has called you to be successful and get results or just to be faithful and trust Him to get the results? Amen. Jesus said upon Peter's confession, He said upon this rock, I'll be in my church. Amen. Uh, I guess my my last question to you, brother, and I, this just kind of uh, coming to me there. We're, we're seeing a movement now uh, where the worldly music, worldly events, worldly methods uh, have taken over, and a lot of uh, I don't even want to call them churches. I want to say religious gatherings. Brother, do you, do you believe that God would ever use the methods of the world just to draw men unto himself? Do you think that God would ever sacrifice any of his attributes or his holiness just so he could get down on the level to draw a crowd? I'm satisfied. Amen. Amen. 